Good morning to those who will be seeing this uh, virtual presentation, to the parents, to the students, to the faculty, to the staff, and those uh, involved in the Christian Emphasis Week. Before I proceed with my greetings, I would like to read to you uh, chapter 1, verses 2 to uh, 4 of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. It says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Uh, this uh, first semester of school year 2020-2021, we again have our Christian Emphasis Week. Because of this pandemic, we will be using the virtual presentations of our speakers. The purpose of this uh, event is basically to introduce the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of these institutions, His life, His saving grace, His ministry, which we believe is very much important while we are learning here at Pilamar Christian University. The uh, knowledge and understanding and belief and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is very important because we always believe that all the things that we have, the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom that we get are basically from His teachings. And these teachings are expounded in the Holy Bible and we are inviting uh, expert speakers, especially our pastors in the community, in the Kapis Kasapalanan of Baptist churches, to expand and express to us so that we can appreciate the Word of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, it is an opportunity for us. In spite of this pandemic, we still is experiencing the inspiration, the protection and the care of our Lord Jesus Christ and His Father. My dear friends, I would like to invite you to see and experience the love of God through Jesus Christ during this Christian Emphasis Week. Thank you very much and we will come everyone. Fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. One of the most influential leaders in the 20th century who shaped the world history is Winston Churchill, known for his decisive act in saving the British people from Hitler's ruthless invasion of Europe. And during this most violent era, 
Churchill pointed out, and I quote, truth is the most valuable thing in the world. It is so valuable that often it is protected by a bodyguard of lies. Truth is the most valuable thing in the world. It is so valuable that often it is protected by a bodyguard of lies. And in the context of World War II, in order to survive, you must treat your enemies with propaganda and lies. So it is a difficult job for any leader to identify what is true from what is false or lies. Because any decision based on false information or lies can result to catastrophe. We are living in the simple age of information or digitalized world. In effect, we are bombarded with a limited influx of information and it constrains us all. The question is, how are we doing to make sense of it? How can we develop the ability to differentiate what is important and unimportant? Ladies and gentlemen, let us reflect on these questions. In the province where I grew up, the current debt cost by suicide is eight times higher than debt cost by COVID-19 since the government imposed lockdown. For several months, for the virus has disrupted the global economy, causing joblessness and anxieties among millions of workers and citizens. COVID-19 has drastically changed our educational learning system and business strategies, but it did it really change our human nature? In Jesus' parable of the rich man and the beggar named Lazarus, he clearly speaks about what the about the tendencies and attitudes of some will privilege people to disown their fellow humans that money or wealth is more valuable than human dignity that those who dwell in the slums and homeless in the streets are irrelevant and insignificant class of people and in his parable Jesus described that a dog owned by the rich man who went outside and approached Lazarus at the gate to lick his sores. It is the instinct of a dog to relate with humans. But what about human to human? Ang pagtilap sa ito sa mga panit ni Lazarus na tama kabaho tungkol sa nakukot abses. Kagagaw siya infected ng kalawasan. Nagapakita na mas na-recognize sa ito ang tao na butong ng buhaw sa respeto ng kaluloy. Apang ang tao sa sumung balay, edukado ng pangarano sa kwarta, kag-assets, hindi maka-identify sa kaya isang katao na biktima sa pagpagigos ng inspis. Kagutis sa ah, mabatasan pang kapitalan ang ilang pagkainuranti o kulang sa ibalo kaysa sa modern, no? When I was in Hong Kong years ago, I met OFWs whose daily work is to feed the dogs of their wealthy employees. But what distort me is that the dog food are expensive than the meals eaten by these OFWs. Ako sila sa Hong Kong, malayo sila kabataan, kagpamilya, adlaw at law do pakaon sa ito sa ina mga employers para may ipakaon man sila mga kapataan dili sa Pilipinas. And in reality, millions of dogs in the world today eat expensive dog food while millions of children and refugees suffered from malnutrition and hunger. Of course, some were privileged people suffered not from hunger but from obesity. Listen, young people 
you have now delivered in preparing your life for your future and for your family. And there are many options for choices in life. But it takes wisdom to distinguish, to identify what is opportunity and what is temptation. In a school, we are being trained to be smart, intelligent, knowledgeable, and competent. We are blessed to be gifted with so many talents and human resources for skills. Helmut Delicke, the German preacher, has reminded us of the quote, Everything we have comes from God. Our ability, our industry, our technical know-how. But when we use it without God, when we use it without God, when we treat it as paid out capital, which we can use as we please, it decays in our hands. It decays in our hands. But do not deny us to my Let me illustrate that point. Maybe many of you are still familiar with the story of Heidi, who's sex details went viral many years ago. And he was labeled as the most hated man in the country after that scandal went viral. I never met Dr. Hagen but I became acquainted with his story when I personally met one of his best friends. Hagen was gifted with physical appearance, intelligence, and social privileges. And during his public confession, he admitted that he was a man of success, fame, money, and social status. But he goes himself in a serious and destructive habit that destroyed his life and profession as an actor, a model, and a medical doctor. His name went viral after he was involved in scandalous activities. He was summoned to the Senate hearing only to be mocked publicly by those who hated and condemned his immoral practices and perversion. This is the problem when you reduce your life to sexual pleasures without commitment, money without ethics, fame without moral purity, influence and privileges without wisdom. Hiding caused humiliation and betrayal resulted to a severe depression and suicidal ideation. But grace strikes in the darkest aspect of our lives. And hiding cause transformation by the grace of God was not an overnight process. And according to one of his public uh, messages, he quoted this letter of Paul in 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And this kind of realization became a conviction in the life of Dr. Hyde. And you know, according to his testimony, after those heartbreaking traumatic experiences and his experience of God's mercy and forgiveness and realizing the truth of God's message to Jesus Christ, he wrote the letter of forgiveness to those women he exploited. And he pursued a life defined by Christ. You see, in John 10, verse 9 to 10, Jesus metaphorically said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pleasure. The gift comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Listen to me. Time and time again, I have met people who struggle with their 
deep-seated insecurity and psychic anger and fear of failure. But when they became Jesus followers, they transcended from an insecure person to confident and wise persons. That is the difference when your life is shaped by the gospel of Jesus. When your pursuit in life is God's goals, then you begin to recognize the invisible yet noticeable activities and work of God in your life. There is no economic formula for abundant living or fullness of life. And in the rich people in the most advanced societies have suicidal tendencies, loneliness syndrome, depression issues, and anxiety problems. You know, I am a fervent power of Jesus. In most of my work every week, juice out my body, mind, and emotion. And since I was 16 years old, I started preaching the gospel. And for 23 years of preaching God's word, my heart longs for more years to grow in the Lord. I wrote and published books and teaching materials for spiritual growth. Even before and now, serving Jesus by serving His children brings me joy and sense of meaning for my daily existence and experience. I have good things in my life. I embrace it and deal with it for more than two decades. But it makes sense when you suffer with God. And since I was a teenager, I was suicidal and struggled with uncontrollable anger. I was very violent and witness until I came to know Jesus and his suffering for humanity. He took great pains in loving us. And on the cross, God's love has a language. On the cross, God's love has a language. Tagdahan pan ko, naisipihan ko, kaya na panalopsok ni sa ako na nagigigway sa pagkuma kagkaluhoy sa Diyos. Ilang sa ako kung sa tanan ng mga nagabat siya na makasasala kung mahigko ang ilang kapatid. It makes sense when you suffer with Jesus. So let me close with this story. For two years now, since my daughter, Scottie Sheen, and my wife were admitted to the hospital, I can only imagine those evening where I can hear voices crying out in pain. And every time the needles are put on their bodies, I can hear those screaming voices crying out in pain. Inside the hospital room, I heard babies screaming and crying out loud, trying to plead, stop, stop, stop with the pain is still there, the pain is still there. I heard family members crying out loud and hearing the doctor that the patients are dead. I can only remember how they promised presence of God sustaining those dark times. I can only remember how God preserved the lives of my daughter and my wife when both of them were helpless under the condition of deadly infection. And so I can clearly understand what Jesus has said here. I am the poor if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find rest. That in Jesus there is fullness of life and pressure forevermore. I can understand the language. I would like to encourage you today. If you have heard this message, take Jesus in your life and allow him to direct you, to guide you, to use you. God bless you.